Okay. It looks like I am officially live. So I'm going to give it a couple minutes. If you guys could let me know in the chat, if you can hear me, I would really appreciate that. This is like my first time setting anything up like this with like the camera and the microphone and everything. Okay, cool. Perfect. So I'll give it like, we started a bit early, so I'll give it actually till one o'clock. Um, and then we can go ahead and get started while everybody joins the room. Okay. So yeah, hello everybody. If you have, you know, if nothing's like, if you can't hear me or the audio's or the video's messed up, just let me know. Um, I'll try to fix that before we go ahead and get started. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. This is like my first time, you know, ever doing something like this like, like, with like a stream um, sort of deal. Audio is clear. Perfect. Okay, then. So I just need to move this over a little bit so I can see the chat a little bit better. Because right now I can't see if you guys say anything. Okay. Hello, Maria. Welcome. Okay. So yeah, how is everybody doing? Again, I'm just going to give it a minute or two um, just to make sure that everyone who wants to watch is here. I'm doing great. I'm honestly, I'm excited. I was, I was nervous before I got on, um, but hey, we're here. Let's do this, you know? So I'm ready to have a good time. So this course, or at least this lesson, will be an hour long. Um, it's going to be from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Um, it'll also be recorded, and I'll post it. It'll be posted here on Teach, and it'll also go onto my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, it's gonna. It's one o'clock basically. So let's go ahead and just get started. Um, so my name is Rune Patel. Um, I go by Blue Hand Coding on TikTok. Um, and this is my first time streaming with Teach. Uh, this is my first stream. Um, and I'm like their entryway into teaching programming. Um, personally, I do a lot of coding with Python in the Arduino platform. You can check out my TikTok profile. Um, it's in the link to my, my profile link. So uh, I just want to talk a little bit more about myself so that you guys know more about me. Um, I'm 17 years old. I've been coding for the last three years now. As I mentioned, I'm the creator of Blue Hand Coding on TikTok, and I'm also a two-time Congressional App Challenge winner. So everyone here has an interest in learning to code. Like that's something that you guys want to do. Um, oftentimes, we find ourselves finding it hard to find the motivation to continue coding. So I just wanted to give you some of those you know, points that make coding such an appealing thing. Um, coding has a lot of job opportunities. It's insane, and they have pretty amazing starting salaries. So by taking this course, you are setting yourself up for success. And even if you choose not to take programming as a career, as a hobby, um, pr programming is extremely rewarding. I would consider myself a hobbyist with programming, and I've, able to, I've been able to do so many cool and amazing things. And it's really primarily used for automating your workflow. Um, so I've heard of stories where people who work in corporate jobs use Python and programming to automate going through all these like tedious Excel sheets. Um, so it helps with all of that. What is Python? So Python is the main programming language that we're going to be taking a look at in this course. Um, as I mentioned, it's one of the biggest and most popular languages, and it's extremely beginner friendly. And that's why I chose to learn Python. And that's why I chose to teach Python in this course. Um, Python has applications just about everywhere in this whole development sphere, um, web development, data science, artificial intelligence. So learning the essentials is going to set you up to sort of branch off into one of those categories. And Python is also called a high-level, general-purpose, interpreted language. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I do want to highlight how it's called a general-purpose language. So as I mentioned, you can sort of dabble into every, just about every field with a knowledge in Python. OK. Ooh, next slide. And now I want to give you guys an overview of the course. Um, this is our first lesson, so 
just so you have an expectation of what's going to be happening. Python is the language you're looking at. And um, I want this course to be as comprehensive as possible. So with that, we're going to cover the most used libraries. And we'll talk about, and as I mentioned, we'll dabble into those little fields. We'll do a little bit of game development. We'll do a little bit of web development. We'll touch on everything so that you know, as a developer, you'll be well-rounded and ready to take on every challenge. Um, my goal with you guys is to basically teach you the basic syntax as quickly as possible. And once we go over all of that, we can start transitioning, building our own applications. So we'll build a weather app. We'll build our own to-do website. And um, in terms of materials for the course, I think, yeah. So in terms of materials for the course, um, right now, since we're just starting off with the basic stuff, we'll be doing everything in the browser, um, just so that's easier for you know, beginners. Um, and later on, we'll move on to installing Python onto our computers. And for those of you who are learning alongside us with a iPad or an iPhone, I'll go over some of the apps that you can use to also code on your devices. So with that overview out of the way, does anybody have any questions? Because if not, we can start transitioning into um, writing some code. So I'll open it up for like a minute to see if anyone has any questions about where we're going to go over. OK, so it doesn't look like we have any questions. So let's go ahead. OK, so you want to go ahead and open up your browser. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to do everything in the browser right now. And you're going to head over to this website called REPL.IT. And once you load that up, you should come on a screen like this. Um, it may ask you to create an account. So do take a moment to go ahead and make that account um, so you can you know, keep track of all the progress that you've made as we continue along with this course. Um, but now that you're here on this site, um, mine may look a little bit different because I'm logged in. Uh, but if, once you sign in, you should be able to create a new REPL. Um, so once you do that, you'll get this prompt. Make sure you select Python as your language. And you can go ahead and name the uh, REPL whatever you want to. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of what REPL is, think of REPL as a way to run um, all your programming languages online. So you don't have to worry about setting them up inside your computer. You don't have to worry about installing them. You can do it all through the browser on their servers. So once, uh, well, actually, I'll take a minute to see if anyone has any trouble setting that up. Um, but if you guys are good with that, just let me know um, so I know that we can go ahead and move on with uh, what's next. Because once you open that REPL, uh, you should come onto a screen. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, would, it will encourage you to create an account. So I do encourage you to create an account. And I don't think it'll let you continue unless you do create an account. Um, the main reason they ha it has you create an account is that it allows you to keep track of all of the different codes that you write. And for the sake of the course, it makes sense for you to create an account. Uh, we'll split every lesson into its own little REPL. And that way, you know, if you're ever reviewing our notes from class, you can go ahead and check on those. So once you create an account, um, and again, if you guys aren't there yet, please let me know. I'll slow down. We can go back and go over that. But once you create an account and you create your REPL and you open up your REPL, you should come onto a screen like this. Now, mine may look a little bit different um, because I've gone ahead and I've, I've maximized it a little bit so it's easier for you guys to read. And I've also changed the color scheme. So if you want to change things like that, you can come onto the sidebar. You'll see this settings thing. And from here, you can change all of your key binding. And for the sake of the course, I do encourage you to turn off code intelligence. Um, right now, we're going to try to figure all of our problems out by ourselves. We don't want the AI to tell us a little too much. Um, it promotes good problem solving. So now that you're here, you should have a main.py. You won't have this assignments.txt. These are just some practice problems that we're going to go over at the end of today's lesson. And you may not have these packager files. But as long as you have this manage.py, you're good to go. And your setup, again, as I said, may be a little bit different. But for the most part, it should look 
something like this. So if you guys could go ahead and let me know if we're all at the same point, then we can go ahead and start writing some code. OK, perfect. So that's one, I'm good. So I'll take that as, as everyone is good to go. Carson asks, what exactly is code? Well, I think that's an important question for me to answer because we're talking about programming in this lesson. So think of code, or rather of a computer, as a being that can only do things that you tell it to do. And a computer can do so many things that you'd be extremely precise with what you tell the computer to do. So think of the code as the instructions that the computer reads and then does. So that is what code is in a sort of abstract sense. Anywho, we are now here in our REPL for our first lesson. So first line of code in Python. We're going to type print just like that. We're going to have an opening parentheses and then a double quote. And you should see how it completes that double quote and also completes that parentheses. And within that, we're just going to type hello world. So yeah, that is your first line of Python code. You've written a print statement in Python. So if we go ahead and we run this, boom, hello world shows up on your console. So this console is where all the output of our code will show. So congratulations. You've written your first line of code in Python. You've taken your first step towards mastering the language. Um, so yeah, let's build off of this. So we are, I also want to mention how with these print statements, we had this general structure. And then I encouraged you to use a double quote. And then we had the hello world. Well, in Python, with things like this, you can also use a single quote. So if I do single quote, hello world, and then I print that out, the same thing pops up. So basically, with these, um, these sentences that we're printing, right? In Python, they're actually called a string. That is a data type. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But just what I want you to think about now is, Whenever we come across things like this, like sentences that are surrounded by these double or single quotes, it really doesn't matter what you use. Um, single quotes is fine. Double quotes is fine. I learned with double quotes. So it's just a habit um, that I take those on. But if you find single quotes easier to use, then you can go ahead and use that. OK, so we do have a couple of questions. Shalvi asks, do spaces matter? So I'm assuming you're asking within the print statement. So within a print statement, spaces do matter. Um, as you see, we have this space here. But I'm assuming she means at the beginning and the end. So we have these two print statements that do the exact same thing. But if I print, uh, if I add the space before this first hello, then we can see that it offsets it a little bit. So the spaces do matter. What is the difference between the console and the shell? So the console, as I mentioned, is sort of the output of the code that you write in Python. The shell, on the other hand, is, um, you know, if you're on a Windows computer, you've probably seen your terminal, or rather, your, um, your CMD. And if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, you've probably seen your terminal. So this is where you can write like commands in Bash. It's not really important for what we're doing right now. So we'll just stick to the console. We'll talk a little bit more about the shell later on. Maria is saying, nothing comes up on the right for me. OK, so REPL, as I mentioned, is, all host, is hosting all the code on their end. So it may be an issue with what's going on on you know, their side if you have a network issue. That might be causing um, some issues with the REPL loading. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is just um, restart the website, you know, close it, open it again, um, and hopefully by then, it'll be a little bit better. Yeah, so just refresh. And if that doesn't work, um, let me know. We'll try to figure something else out. But we'll continue. So we have our hello world. And as I mentioned, we have the double quotes and the single quotes. And I also want to take this time to sort of encourage you to, or you can't hear. That's a problem. 
Let me see if I can fix that. So the audio, can you guys hear me now? Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry guys. This is my first time, so if there's any issues, let me know. I'll try to fix them. Anyway, back to what we were doing. We have our print statements, and I want to take this time to encourage you guys to sort of remix the code that we write to um, you know, make it your own. So you know, just take some time to just print whatever. You know, this is your first time writing code. So just write any print statements that you want to and just see how they show up. Is the site muted? Okay, so it looks like my audio, is my audio gone for everyone? Because in that case, I need to, okay, perfect, thanks guys, okay. So what website am I using to code? I am using REPL.IT. We went over that a little bit earlier on. Yeah, sorry about the issues, guys. Anyway, let's, I'm going to try to stay focused now. So yeah, I encourage you guys to remix the code, make it your own, add your own sort of touch to it. So we've written our print statements. Cool. Now we can move on to something more interesting. And what we're going to talk about now is variables. So in math, you know, you have variables like x. And x is sort of like a placeholder where you can put in other values. And variables in programming are so cool because you can use them to make your program more dynamic. You can add your own touch to them. So right now, we're going to write some code. Uh, we're going to create a variable that has our name in it. And then we're going to print our name out to the console. The first step is to create the variable. So to create a variable, we're going to name our variable name, N-A-M-E. And we're going to say N-A-M-E. So that's the name of our variable, variable is equal to, remember we have our string data type, which works with single and double quotes. So either works. And my name is Varun. Boom, we have created a variable. And it's really similar to what you would see in math. You know, if you have an expression, you would have x is equal to six. So it's sort of like that. There are some rules with naming variables. Um, a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore character, so something like that. Um, variable names cannot contain uh, alphanumeric characters and underscores. Or sorry, they can only contain alphanumeric numbers and, and um, underscores. So you could have the alphabet, you could have numbers, you can have underscores. Those are all, all valid. However, you can't start it with a underscore. Variable names are case sensitive. So if you have name, and then you have name in all caps, these are two different variables. Just because they're spelled the same way doesn't mean they you know, point to the same value. So cool. We have a variable. Um, and you don't have to make it name. You can make it your age. You can make it you know, your date of birth, whatever you want to. So now let's sort of combine the variables that we touched on now and the print statements from earlier. We're going to type print. And then we're going to put our name. I run this, boom, my name gets printed. So let's, let's add a little bit more to it. OK, so we're going to leave this print statement as it is, but we're only going to change the variable now. So instead of being just Varun, I'll add my last name. And as you'd expect, when you print this out, we're going to hope to see my full name, Varun Patel. So let's run that. And boom, as you can see, we changed the variable. And then when we printed it out later on, we came up with Varun Patel. So that's one example of how we can use variables. So let's create another variable. We'll say age, right? And for this age, we're going to just say 18 or 17, rather. And again, we're going to leave this as a string. We're going to leave it in those double quotes or single quotes. So what happens if I want to print a sentence that says, my name is Varun Patel? And I am 17. Well, that's where we sort of chain these print statements together. So let's start building, let's start by building the first half of that print statement. My blank is blank, or rather, my name is blank, and I am blank years old. 
Let me open this up so it's a little, it's all in one line. So we have this full, we have these placeholders, right? And we want to input our, our variables into there. So now what we're going to be talking about is something called string, string concatenation. And we'll talk a little bit more about what this is later on, but string concatenation. So my name is blank, and I am blank years old. How do we add the name and the age variable into that sentence? And there's three different ways. The first way is through something I like to call like the addition syntax. So what it looks like, and I'll explain it once I finish it up, and I am plus age, and then we have the plus years old. So this may look a little confusing, and I forgot the plus sign right here. And this is actually like the worst way to write it, but I figured I'd go over all of the techniques for string concatenation. So let's go back over the sentence. My name is, okay, where I had that last placeover, I've replaced it with a plus, the name variable, and then another plus. And then it resumes, and I am, I have another plus, the age variable, a plus, years old. So basically what we're doing, is we're taking that full sentence that we had, and we're cutting into parts. And then we're taking those parts and we're putting them all together. We're pasting them back together once we put our name and age variables in. So once we do that, if we print that out, we should hopefully see something along the lines of, my name is Varun Patel, and I am 17 years old. And if you see that, bingo. That is exactly what we get. And so, you know, just take a time to, if that doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, I'll go back over it. But if everyone's okay with that example, then we can move on to the next you know, form of string concatenation. So I'll just give you guys a second to you know, remix the code if you want to, catch up if you need to ask any questions. Yeah, we can go over it again. You want me to go over a different example or should, is this example good? You just want me to explain it one more time. Okay, we'll do a different example. I, I know this is a little confusing, um, but we'll get past it, trust me. Don't let this discourage you if it doesn't make sense right now. This is all like practice, it all comes uh, with time. So let's actually just start on a smaller scale. Okay, we'll get rid of all that, and we'll get rid of this. What we wanna print is my name is Varun Patel, right? So print my name is blank. So like I did last time, we're leaving that little placeholder in there. So how do we add this name variable in there? I can't just put my name is name. If you run that, we get my name is name. So I have to have a different way. And as I mentioned earlier, there's three different ways of you know, combining a string and a variable together. Right now, we're going to do it through these plus signs, through the addition syntax, as I like to call it. It's the worst way, but it's always good to know. So the way you would write that, my name is Rin Patel, is you'd have my name is, and then you'd add on to it the variable Varun Patel. So if we run this, we see my name is Rin Patel. And if I change the variable, then we see my name is Varun. So it's really about taking the string, or rather the steps with writing this sort of thing, is you take the whole string that you want to write, as we did before, we had my name is blank, right? you turn that blank into this plus, and then you add on to it that variable that we had last time. So it's sort of like math. You're just adding this on to the end of the sentence. You're adding whatever this name value is to the end of my name is. So does that make a little bit more sense? Because what we did before is we were just chaining that. We had my name is Rube Patel, and I am blank years old. We chained two things up, and I guess that could be a little bit confusing. So if we're okay with that, we can go ahead and talk about the different ways of, or the other two ways of adding the variables. Okay, perfect, awesome. So yeah, addition syntax, ugly, but of course it's good to know. Now we're gonna talk about something called an F string. So think of the F in F string as a formatted string. 
So again, let's start with the, you know, the base that we had. My name is blank, right? Addition syntax, we just added in that plus and that name. But with the F string, we're going to format this string, right? And we're going to format it so that we can add in our name variable. So how do we create a format string? Well, to create a format string, you have to tell Python, hey, this is a formatted string in the first place. So to do that, we come here before our double quote or our single quote. Both are equally valid. And we'll just put an F. So that is what denotes a formatted string. So when our, our Python is running all of our code, you know, and it comes to this and it sees, hey, I need to print out this whole thing. This is a formatted string. It then knows to put a variable inside that string. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, let me know. Stop me at any point. I'd be happy to go back over all this stuff. So we know that the string is formatted, but where does this variable go? What variable do we use? So for that, we then use these brackets. And then we type in the name of our variable. So this is a little, a lot more readable. It makes so much more sense, and it's so much nicer to look at with instead of having this whole plus sign. So to go back over what we did, we had our base string. You know, my name is blank. We then told Python, "Hey, this is a formatted string," and we did that by adding this f. F stands for format. So it also stands for the f and the f string. So we have a formatted string. And now we have to tell Python, hey, the variable that we need, it has to go here. And the variable that we're using is called name. So it's referring directly to this variable. So if we run this, we see my name is Varun. Right? Like this is so much nicer and easier to look at. So that's, so we have our addition syntax, we have our f string, and now we're gonna talk about. Um, we're going to use what I like to call comma syntax with printing. So you're going to we're going to split everything with a comma. So again, let's start with our base. My name is blank, and like unlike last time, we don't have to make it a formatted string because we're not doing anything with an f string. So we have my name is blank. What you do with this is you actually just take that out. You add a comma, and then you write the name. So what you're telling Python to do here isn't printing a whole string. You're actually telling it to print two different things. You're printing the name first, and then right after, you're printing the name. So in these two examples, we actually combined them before. But in this third um, example, we're actually doing two separate things, which is why there's split by that comma. But if we run this, we should get the exact same response. And you'll note that in our addition syntax right here, I had to leave this space after this is, and after I had to leave a space after the is in our f string syntax. But in our, you know, our comma syntax, I didn't have to leave that space, but we have a space. So basically, Python is adding those on for me. It's combining those things with a space between them. So those are the three ways to combine our strings and our variables and then print them all out to our console. So. Any questions? So how would you add the age? OK, let's get started adding the age. And we'll go through all three of these. Before I do that, is everybody, are we all OK? Do I need to go over any of these? OK, it looks like, it looks like everyone's fine. Krish asks, what is the easiest way for the three? OK, as I mentioned, I absolutely hate this syntax. Imagine you have a string with a bunch of variables. This makes it so hard to read. So honestly, both of these work just fine. Um, I prefer the f string syntax um, because with this, you know, the space, you can't always control it. But look, I can, you know, it doesn't have to have a space between it. So the f string syntax, in my opinion, um, gives you the most flexibility and you can do the most with it. But I know, again, both of these, I would say, are the best out of the three. This one sucks. So anyway, I'll leave these three here as an example. Yes, yes, Molik is correct. This comma, that, that's only a print statement sort of thing. 
So we're passing in two different things, and then the print statement is printing out each one. Cool. So now let's sort of expand on this. Let's add our age variable in there. And we'll do it with both of these, with all three of these. And I do encourage you guys to work ahead of me just so you can you know, get some experience working by yourself, and then we can, we, you can check um, once I catch up to you. So let's start with what we already have. We want to print my name is blank, and I am blank years old. So let's create that sort of foundation that we're going to build upon. My name is blank, and I am blank years old. Cool. So what did we do with our addition syntax? We said, hey, we're going to take all of our underscores, all of our placeholders, and we're going to put a plus sign there. Let me open this up so it's not as difficult to read. And you can see how this is getting kind of hard to figure out. I'm actually going to format this whole thing, and then we'll go over what is happening. It looks terrible, right? OK. So just like last time, we have our my name is plus name. So we have our my name is string. We're adding on the name. And then after that, we're also going to add on the and I am. After that, we add on our age variable. And then we add on the years old. And once you combine all them together, once you add all those things together, and you print that out to your console, you get the full message. So chaining all of these together can get pretty confusing. That's why I keep going, you know, keep you know, solidifying this idea that the addition syntax is just not the best way to do it. Um, so yeah, just think of it as though you have a string. You're adding a piece onto it. So I have a string. I'm adding this on. And then I'm adding this on. And then I'm adding this on. And I'm adding this on. And once they're all added together, my sum, if you will, of all the strings comes out to this. So I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with the other two formats. So f strings, I love them. I'll show you how easy it is to do an f string. So again, we'll create our format. My name is blank, and I am blank years old. Cool. Our second step is to tell Python that this is a f string, that this is a formatted string. How do we do that? Well, just like in our first example, we add that f to the beginning. Boom. And now we just have to put those variables where we want them. So my name variable is the first thing I want right here. Get rid of that placeholder, put those brackets there, and within them I'm going to write name. Super easy. And I'm sure you guys can follow along with what's happening with age. Get rid of the placeholder, put in the brackets, age. It's so much shorter. It's so much easier. You don't have to worry about all the plus signs. It's beautiful. So let's run this, and hopefully, bingo. Works out just fine. So finally, let's do it with our comma syntax, where it's split with those commas. And remember, when you have those commas, Python automatically adds that space in for you. So let's create the placeholder. My name is blank, and I am, oop, I am blank years old. Let's go to all of our placeholders, and we're going to try to split it up. And we have name, comma, and then this. Even this is getting a little bit tedious for tasks where you have to scale up, which is why you know, those F strings are just so amazing. So my name is comma, name, comma, and I am comma, I am age, comma, years old. So not as clunky as the addition syntax, but not as nice as those f strings. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. We're going to tell Python, hey, print out my name is. And Python automatically going to add in that space. It's going to have my name is space. It's going to print that name variable out, Varun. My name is space Varun. And then we get another space here, space, and I am space age space years old. So like I said before, with that addition syntax, we had to add in those spaces every time we sort of split it up. With this comma syntax, we don't have to do that. And if I come across to the side panel, run this, it's the same thing. So yeah, 
that is, those are the three syntaxes and we sort of scaled them up. And hopefully you guys, I, I can't stop you know, emphasizing this. Those F strings are just like the best thing ever. When you start building more complex applications, you'll find that the F strings are the things that you'll primarily use. So I'll open the floor to, to any questions if anyone has anything um, that they want me to go back over. If anything, there's anything, if there's anything that they're curious about, um, I'll give it a minute. And if there's nothing else, um, we can go ahead and continue with the next part of today's lesson. Thank you, Zane. I appreciate that. I'll take that as the sign that I think everyone's OK. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, if you're not getting it, that's OK. You know, This sort of thing is it's abstract. It's a little bit complex. Give it some time. Take some time to practice. Um, ask questions. You can you know, join my Discord. There's a lot of people there who are um, you know, down to help. Cool. So what we've been doing is we've been working a lot with this string data type. You know, we've been doing a lot of string sentence stuff. And when you think of a computer, you often think of it doing, you know, these hardcore mathematical computations. It's working with numbers. So let's clear the board. Actually, let's clear all of these print statements because it's getting a lot. So right now, we just have this name and this age variable. This age variable, we've treated it as a string this entire time. So Let's try something else. Let's try adding a year. All right, so let's do 17 plus 1. And we would hope that it would print 18. So we're going to take our age. We're going to add 1 to it. Everyone following along? So we're taking 17, and we're adding a 1 to it. And we print that out. We hope to see 18. And yes, in, in this print statement, you can sort of evaluate expressions. So think of this age plus one as an expression. And the print statement runs that expression and then prints out what comes out of it. So if you run this, age is a string, by the way. We get an error. Our error says, hey, I can only concatenate strings. I can't do that with an integer. OK, that, that's weird. So again, a lot of things that we're going to focus on in this course are also reading our error messages, because they tell you a lot. We're getting a type error. And it's saying that we're not able to concatenate our string, which is with an integer. That's weird. I wanted to print out 18, but it's trying to concatenate it. This age is a string, but what is this 1? This 1 is what we call an integer, hence the int. An integer is a digit, 1, 2, 3, 4, anything like that, a whole number, a real whole number. And so what Python is assuming we're trying to do is we're trying to combine those sentences with that with the addition syntax, you know? So Python is assuming we're trying to do something like this, age plus 1, which gives you 171. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to add these numbers together and get a sort of um, final result. How do we do that? Well, you can't combine a sentence with a number, right? That doesn't make sense. So we need to turn this 17 into an integer. Well, how do you turn this into an integer? Well, you just get rid of these double quotes. You just get rid of these single quotes. And you see how this color changed. It changed from this brown that denotes a string to this green, this light green that denotes an integer. So this is now what we call an integer. It's a, it's a 17. It's a whole number. And now if we run our code and we try to evaluate this expression, 17 plus 1, age plus 1, we should get 18. That's what we get. So when we change from that string to an integer, we can allow ourselves to do things like addition. But it's also weird because we had addition with our string. So it's a little bit of you have to get used to it because all the times there are redundancies in programming. So basically what I want to focus on for this last sort of half of our lesson today is the integer. How we can you know, combine it with strings, how we can do math with it, how we can increment and decrement. So cool. We have two variables now, right? 
we have name and age. Let's create another variable. We'll call it age next year. Age next year. How do we get our age next year? Well, we can manually make it 18, right? Because we know 17 plus 1 is 18. That's not fun, though. Let's make it that expression that we printed out earlier. We'll make it 17, or rather, age plus 1. So we have age next year is equal to this whole age plus 1. So if we print that out, if we print out age next year, we should hopefully get 18. So what you're doing here is you're setting this age variable, right? It's pretty simple. You're referencing it, however, later on in your code, and you're using it and its value to create another variable. So now, let's try printing out a string that says something along the lines of, my name is, my name is Varun, and I am 17. Next year, I will be 18. And you know we could do this with all of the uh, plus sign addition syntax and the comma syntax. However, um, I'm just going to go with the f-string syntax for the sake of now. So how do we do it? Well, we have to create our base. I name is blank, period. I am blank years old, period. Next, next year, let me move this. I will be blank, period. Cool. What's the first step with those? What's the second step, actually, with the F strings? Tell Python it's an F string. How do we do that? Add the F. Cool. And now with this underscore, a placeholder, what do we do? We put the bracket. And then we put our name in there. My name is name, and I am bracket age years old. Next year, I will be bracket age. Oh, it's got to be in the bracket. Age next year. Cool. So what do we expect this is going to print? My name is Varun. I am 17 years old. Next year, I will be 18. So if we run this, my name is Rune. I'm 17, year old, 17 years old. Next year, I will be 18. It looks like we have a question. The age next year variable, does it have to be case sensitive? Actually, it doesn't. So you could very well have it as age next year like that. And we can make it all lowercase. And again, we can make it all uppercase too. The reason why I chose to have these, um, these uppercases after every whole word is actually something called camel case. And camel case, it's, it's a little bit out of the scope of what I wanted to talk about today, but it's basically a way to, talk, to name your variables. So again, let's go back to our previous examples. We had age next year. Let's say you're like a developer, right? You're a programmer and you're looking at my code and you see this variable. It's kind of hard to pick apart every word that tells you what this variable is. Right? It's kind of hard to differentiate age. It's hard to differentiate the next and then the year. However, you can put something like this. And it's a little bit easier. Those capitals break up the variable into its different names. And if you find that's not working for you, or that's not cutting it for you, you can try something like this, age next year. And this is, again, a perfectly normal way to name your variables. This is what's called snake case. And again, if we copy this, paste that here, and we say this is equal to age plus one, it'll work just the same. Okay, so it really just comes down to personal preference. It comes down to readability. Other, other than that, you know, it doesn't really matter. These, these are just conventions that programmers set for themselves so that their code is readable by themselves. So if you find that camel case isn't cutting it for you, feel free to switch into snake case. If you feel as though the double quotes aren't cutting it for you, single quotes, there's a, there's a lot, of, lot of flexibility in how you can write your code. So cool, we've added in our, our age next year variable. So now we're going to talk about something called incrementing and decrementing. OK? So let's get rid of this again. We'll rewrite the same print statement later to just get practice, but I want to get rid of it right now. So we have this age plus one, right? What about age last year? Right? 
we could have age minus one, right? And these, this is perfectly valid, right? But I'm gonna show you another way to do this sort of incrementing thing. And actually, before I continue, um, does anyone have any like questions? You know, are we, are we okay? I don't wanna continue. Okay, good so far. I'll give it a minute in case anyone needs to catch up. Um, and I'll just catch up on my notes while I'm waiting. Okay. Okay. Actually, I got a little bit ahead of myself. I just reviewed my notes and I actually missed something that I wanted to go over. I actually wanted to go back to that addition syntax. I know it's ugly, but it actually gives us a good segue into moving between the strings and the integers. So I'm just going to create another base sentence again. My name is blank and I am blank years old, right? And we're going to do that nasty, nasty addition plus name plus I'm really struggling with this. I, had, I never have to use this. And I am plus age plus years old, right? That's our sentence. And you know, I want to you know, go over the fact that name is a string and age is an integer. So we've concatenated all I think correctly. We run that, we get an error. You can only concatenate strings. What does that mean? You can only concatenate strings. That's saying I can only add strings to get, I can only add things together if they're strings. Well, okay, let's go through our code. Let's see which part of the thing may not be adding together into that full sentence. This is a string. This is a string. This is a string. This age variable is not a string, but then this is the string. So we can say that, hey, this age variable, that's our problem. That's the thing that's not adding up. So how do we turn age? into a string. Well, as I mentioned, you could always add those double quotes, right? But we'll, let's leave it as an integer. Basically, we're going, to, we're going to transform our age variable into a string. And to do that, we're going to take it right here. We're going to add s, t, r. We're going to put that in, this, in, these, in these parentheses. So this s, t, r function, what is it doing? Well, s, t, r is the first three letters of string. So think of str as like a conversion thing. You're taking this integer. Once you put it underneath that str, you get a string, okay? So if you run this, then we shouldn't get any issues, right? Boom, it works perfectly. So if we leave it like, so that's another way you can, so that's like how you can have different data types Right? You can have a string, you can have an integer, but you can also move between them. OK, so let's say, let's go back to our other example. Right, Let's make age a string again. And we wanted to print out age plus 1. Right? We know that doesn't work. Now what we can do here is, as I mentioned, you can always get rid of those double or single quotes, but we'll leave them. What you can do is you can turn this age into, a, into an integer. So how do we turn an, a string into an integer? Well, we, knew, we know that turning an integer into a string, we use str. So by that sort of logic, we actually use the int function, int, I-N-T. So integer will take this age, right? 17 as a string, and then it'll convert that into a number, into an integer. And only once it's an integer can we actually start adding it. So we run this, we get 18. OK, so this integer thing, it worked because you know, there was actually an integer within, you, know, you can pull an integer from this string. But what if I wanted to do, what if I wanted to print out the integer value of my name? Would that work? How would you be able to pull a number from a thing that's all comprised of, of letters. You can't. You can't. Because it, as it's saying, invalid literal for int with base 10. So basically, that's just saying, hey, I'm not able to pull any number out of this entire string. So it throws a value 
error. So we have our string data type. We have our integer data type. So what's missing? We're missing something called a float, F-L-O-A-T. So with numbers, right? you can have whole numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But what about when you need to get a little bit more specific, um, like pi? 3.1415926. How do you add that precision? You do that with a floating point. So let's have an example of all three data types, 17. And then we'll just call this pi. We'll say 3.1415926. Right? OK. So I, I can tell what a string is because it has a double or single quotes around it. How do I differentiate between an integer and a floating point, or a float. Well, the difference between them is the fact that um, this has a decimal. That's basically it. So if we had the 17.0, this would be considered a floating point. So I'll take a time to any questions. You know, I've just introduced all the data types, or the major data types at least. So if you, if there are there any questions that you guys want to that you guys want to ask or that way you guys want to go over? Or if you just want to catch up? OK, I'm not seeing anything. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and continue. So cool. We have our age. We have our floating point. We have our string. And with the time we have right now, I can't really introduce all three of these data types as, as much as I'd like to. So I, I just think of this as like a brief touch upon the data types. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in our next, um, our next lesson. So with the last 10 minutes left, um, let's just go ahead and review what we've done today. Um, and we're going to do a little bit, so a little bit of practice um, you know, just to make sure that what we, what we have is concrete and solid. So today we talked about our print statements, right? And within these print statements, you can use double quotes or you can use these single quotes, sorry, these single quotes to print out whatever you'd like to to our console. And we also uh, spent time setting up our REPL, our programming environment. Um, we talked about the double and single quotes. We talked about our F strings. We used our commas. We used our addition syntax um, to sort of chain those variables and the strings together. And we did talk about variables as well. We talked about the best way to name variables. We talked about camel case, snake case. Um, and we touched briefly upon the floating data point, the floating data type, the integer data type, and the string data type. And with those string and integers, we talked about converting between them, the str function, the int function. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and just start a little bit of practice, just so that we can make sure what we have is solid and really concrete. And then, you know, I might assign some homework. But we'll start with this first question right here. What is wrong with the following line of code? And we'll actually just make this a print statement so it's easier for us to visualize what we did. Have this I have a space of this plus you need a plus right here, plus, and then you have space apples. So I'm going to open it up to the chat. I want to hear what you guys think is wrong with this code. So we have two answers right now. Deepak says 10 is an int. Shalvi says 10 isn't defined. Those are both valid in terms of what we turned talking about today, but Deepak is correct. This 10, yeah, the 10 must be a string. So let's copy this, bring it into our code, right? Run this. We'll say, hey, yeah, you can't do that. So Shalvi did say that 10 isn't defined. So within what we're doing right now, 10 is not actually a variable. As I said, variables can't start with numbers, so this wouldn't even be a valid variable name in the first place. Um, that 10 has to be, an, it's an integer, so you can sort of combine it anyway. But yeah, you guys are all right. Uh, 
it's they're not you can't add the string and the integer. So how would we then fix that? How would we, you know, if I if I want to leave this as an integer, and but I still want to combine everything together, what would I do to make it like that? Blue hand coding sun says quotations. Um, other people are recommending putting 10 as a variable. You could do that. As I mentioned before, 10 is actually not a valid variable name in the first place. But I guess I should you know, be more clear with what I'm asking. What function could I use to turn this, this integer into a, into a string? So yeah, say is saying put 10 as a string. Yeah, we can do that with our str function. If we run that, it works out. So I should have been a little bit more clear with what I was asking. But that was great, guys. That was awesome. OK, this is actually, this is actually a perfect segue into our next question. Um, why is name, just like this, right, excluding the little asterisks, a valid variable name and not 100? Exactly, GYK Gamer is correct, because it's a number. We can't have those numbers. We can't have a number to start off our variable name. So if we go here, right? And we try to say our variable is 100, right? And we try to set it equal to root. That really doesn't make sense, does it? It's like you're taking a number and you're trying to give it a string value. What if we had like something else like my name 100? And yeah, that would work. You just can't start with a number. Cool. I'm pretty sure everyone got that right, yeah. Cool. Which of these is a string and which is a variable? And this is just about the name, not really the assignment. So with these two, which one of these would you call a string? And then which one of them would you call a, is a sorry, a variable? Yeah, foo with those double parentheses is a string. And so what is, so we've, we've written it with double parentheses here, right? So what is another way that you can write a string that doesn't use double parentheses or double quotes, sorry. Exactly, Shabi is right, single quotes. Again, those, it's all of a preference thing, even the variable naming thing, it's all it comes down to um, preference. And we have five minutes left. Um, so again, I'll open the floor to any more questions if anyone's curious about what we've gone over in today's lesson. Um, Again, as I mentioned, the recording will be put on Teach, but I'll also have my own copy that I'll go and put onto my YouTube channel. Um, I will give you guys a sort of overview of what we're going to touch upon in our next lesson um, and when the date for that will be. Um, the next lesson, we'll start with a review, just like what we did again, just to make sure that we have everything down. And as I mentioned, we touched upon those floating and those ins today, but let's actually start diving into them. Let's start you know, adding numbers. We'll start with division. And we'll make a little bit of a calculator game. Well, then we'll move from those ints into the from the sorry the int and the floats, and then we'll talk about you know adding our input so we can type in stuff, and that stuff is then used by the code. When is the next class? Okay, so this is my first time streaming. Um, I haven't set a I haven't set a um, a definite schedule, but of course all these lessons are recorded. So when I do get to it, you guys will always be able to access them, and it will always be free. Um, I'll always be sure to put up a three-day notice, a 72-hour notice of when uh, lessons go live so that you guys can know three days in advance. Um, those will go live on either my Discord, my Instagram, or my TikTok stories. And so I hope that answers your question. I can't say for sure. It may be sometime during the next week. Um, but I hope that once I start, you know, this is starting at a really weird time. Um, I hope that when I start, I'll be cutting, you know, I'll be doing it uh, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday around this time time. Um, is there a Replic class made? No, I made this really quickly. I'll be sure to do that for next time. Um, will we be in Visual Studio Code? Yes, we will touch into Visual Studio Code, and we'll also touch into installing Python um, after we go over all of the basics. Is there a huge difference between GitHub and Replit? OK, so GitHub, think about it as like a big storage container, right? You write code, and you put it into GitHub. And then you can use it to share that code. Replit, you can do the same thing. You can write code and share it. 
but it's more about, actually, sorry, let me clear that up. With GitHub, you write the code on your end, and then you send it off to GitHub, and it stores it for you. And then you can access it, share it from, from GitHub. With Replit, you can do the same thing, but you can also write the code in Replit itself. There should also be an event schedule. Yes, Molik is my Discord mod. He is correct. There will be an event schedule for every class in our Discord. So be sure to uh, join that. And my son has posted that, the link there. Um, also not sure if you did go over the phone apps. That can be used as my volume start working. Yeah, we'll touch a little bit upon that later, Moez. Um, the whole setting up the environment for you know, when you guys start coding on your own machines. But for right now, we're sticking to the browser because it's just easier um, for collaborative things in the first place. Also, are we going to are we going to be using our Raspberry Pi and Arduino? Um, right now, first lesson Python. But honestly, if you know you guys are interested and you express the interest and you have the materials to follow along, I don't mind. I have a Raspberry Pi right here. I have an Arduino in the back. It's right here, actually. I I don't mind. You know setting something up for that and we can you know work with those. So that actually brings us to the end of our time. It was really fun guys. I really had a great time. Um, again, any questions um, and we're not in class, you can always reach out to me. Discord, Instagram, TikTok, I'm always available, always ready to answer your questions. Um, thank you guys for a great class. Thank you guys for the participation. Um, thank you guys for the great questions. Um, I hope that the next few classes that we have will just will be engaging and fun like this as well. I had a great time. Um, so yeah, um, stay posted. Hopefully those things will all go out soon. And well, take care of yourself and have a nice day. Well, actually, now I need to figure out how to how do how do I stop this? I have no idea how to turn this off. Is it this? Oh, no, it's this leave button. OK. OK. OK, now, now we can say bye. Actually, one more question. Where can we practice Python? Here is the perfect site that I use, practicepython.org. It is the best site. It comes with a bunch of exercises. We'll touch upon all of these later on. But if, you, if, you, you know, if you're excited and you want, to get touched, you want to touch on those right now, that's the place to do it. Anyway, goodbye. Take care of yourself. Have a good day.